Hello to all the horn players in Russia. I am very happy that you are interested to ask questions, and now I would like to introduce to you our panel. First, this is Professor Bauman. Herman Bauman is perhaps the greatest soloist of all time, and he taught at the Folkfang Hochschule for Music in Essen for many years. He is also a conductor on the side. And everybody knows his list of records and CDs that are almost too many to count. He recorded an unbelievable amount of recordings in a quality that simply set the standard for us all. Then we have here Javier Bonet from Spain. He plays in the Orchestra Nacional de España in Madrid, but who is mainly known as a horn soloist all over the world. A brilliant soloist. He just spent the last three days recording the Mozart horn concertos here in Mindelzell, Germany. He also teaches. He also travels to Russia often, Rostov, and next year again in Russia. And then if I may introduce myself, I am Engelbert Schmidt. I used to be a horn player, but then later chose to become a horn maker. And I believe everybody knows Engelbert Schmidt horns. Just on a side note, real quick, we would like to mention the Mendelssohn Horn Days coming up soon in March 2015. It might be an interesting event to attend where you can learn more about the playing styles of Germany, Europe, and the USA. Plus, one could even test a few Engelbert Schmidt horns as well while attending. And now we will answer the questions that were sent in from our horn player friends in Russia. Vitaly Marchenko fragt I can ask the question for everybody. How are you? Are you all healthy? And what kind of creative plans do you have planned? Uh, guten Tag. Uh, I speak in English. Um, I have, uh, of course, um, plenary for, I have uh, plans to play. I have a lot of uh, different concerts. But uh, in, my, in my brain, I want, my plans is uh, continue to record uh, the the best pieces, uh, the best re uh, repertoire that we have in, in, in our literature. Naturally, um, I also have plans. I so must I take my to production to into the next generation. The next generation that means that I must begin so in the next 5, 10 or 20 years to make the production system independent from me. And that's a very big job to achieve. Other than that, I am working on perfecting my Vienna horn. I want to get it technically so fast that it can become a solo instrument. That, for me, is a wonderful goal. That is a solo instrument sich etabliert. Das ist eine schöne Aufgabe. Ilya Petrichenko fragt Herr Would like to ask Mr. Bonnet, which instrument? would you have chosen had you not taken on the horn? Oh, this is a very easy question for me. Uh, violoncello. I like the sound of the violoncello, and for me the horn is the violoncello of the brass. It's the, it's, it's the most uh, similar sound to the voice. Horn, voice, horn, uh, violoncello, voice. For me it's an ideal sound. Vitaly Marchenko would like to ask you all, where and with whom did you learn from? Well, that would be Fritz Hut in Hamburg. I learned the most from him, but I was still just a small horn player still. I first started to play horn when I was 17, and only three years later I became the principal horn in Dortmund. Then it was a very fast track upwards after that, and I believe that I have to thank Fritz Hut for giving me my foundation, scales, for example. Oh, I start uh, horn in Spain with uh, music with my father. And then uh, in Valencia with Miguel Rodrigo, but after that, of course, my teacher 
when I came here to Germany, it's here, it's the great Hermann Baumann. We have Alice, Alice Music, gathered with him. Oh, it's in German. Well, I, I said in German or in English, I don't know, but I have Alice, all, I have all my uh, art with Hermann. Uh, Gelernt is in German. <laughs> yeah, this is good. It's okay, it's clear. <laughs> good. I actually have seven teachers. The most important ones were Georg Schmidt from my school days in Augsburg, who just so happens to have the same name as my father. And then, in order to get a position in an orchestra and become a professional horn player, the most important was Jack Meredith, an American who played in Munich for years and was the principal horn in the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra. I would like to include a few other players who influenced me as well, such as a trumpet player, Rolf Quinke. I sat a full year next to Gerd Seifert, from whom I automatically learned a tremendous amount from without ever having an official lesson with him. And for musicality, I would like to mention Michael Hulzen. Von Herr Lebedev would like to ask Mr. Baumann, are you still teaching and do you do master courses? If so, where and when? Ah, we make uh, together, uh, together in Oxford. We have to go in May together with our project. We are presenting the Mozart recording and we are teaching together there the next. Mm. Also in Spain, we have three, three different, not, we don't know exactly the dates, but it's in the next uh, two or three months. I also teach in Switzerland and Germany, among other places all over the world. I was professor at the Folkwang Hochschule in Essen and have taught my entire life. Before that, I was 12 years in orchestras, but then chose to teach because from young people, one can learn the most. I always believed in giving and taking from each other. That is what is so wonderful on teaching, giving and taking from each other. Because young people can bring completely new things to the surface that a teacher must quickly understand and add to. It's like starting at the bottom and creating a tree of learning between student and teacher. Each gives and takes different elements in order to create fantastic results. That is a wonderful thing. Vyacheslav Lebedev would like to ask Mr. Bonnet, how many hours do you practice a day? I would think, as a first horn player with regular concerts to play in an orchestra, that one is automatically fit most of the time and doesn't need any additional training. I am curious how you prepare yourself for solo concerts. Do you have exercises to develop your strength and conditioning? And what do you do when you have not had time to prepare yourself? I mean, because of long hours and of travel, etc. Do you use any type of strengthening gadgets like chopsticks? And how many solo concerts do you have per year? Long <laughs> course. <laughs> um, it's true that when you are uh, playing normal in orchestra and teaching and etc. etc. Uh, there is not too much uh, time to practice. Then uh, normally, uh, what what you are doing, what I do, it's you have to know exactly the time that you have and what you need for the for the piece that you have to play. We don't have two hours, three hours. When when I was student, I, I practiced uh, four, five, six hours. But now 
many days you have only 20 minutes, half hour, then you have to be very concentrated and you know if you have to play Strauss, where are the two or three or four places that you have to practice a little bit. And this is all. I don't use... Uh, mm, Chopstick? Yeah, no. It's, uh, only, I think the best, uh, f uh, the most important thing, it's, it's your brain. It's, you have to think what, what you have to play, what you need, and uh, to be relaxed and not, not too much thinking, and I have to play, I have to play today two hours. No, you have to know your body and then um, be, be very uh, concentrated and uh, with, uh, with short time, uh, you have to practice uh, only what you really need. Thank okay. you. To Mr. Schmidt, I understand you make lead pipes out of nickel silver because it is more resistant to saliva. How does the sound change when the lead pipe would be made out of gold, brass or sterling silver? Yes, the lead pipe has approximately 10%. Yeah, you know, maximum of 10% influence on the sound of the horn. As opposed to, for example, the detachable screw bell of a horn that has about 60% sound influence. So, specifically addressing the metal of the horn, a brass horn with a detachable gold brass bell sounds to approximately 60% like a full gold brass horn. So the lead pipe does not play that big of a role. You could say a lead pipe out of gold brass in comparison to a nickel silver lead pipe that around about 5 or 10 percent gold brass sound will come out of it. By sterling silver lead pipes it's like double gold brass in general. Okay, it's softer and gold brass is somewhat darker and fewer overtones. And by sterling silver it is again rounder. But even there, a lead pipe out of sterling silver doesn't influence everything all that much. All three lead pipe types are resistant to saliva. Nickel silver, gold brass, and sterling silver. Sterling silver is more resistant against the sweat of your hand. So that means it will have a long life expectancy. But one should not put such a large focus on what type of metal the lead pipe is. It doesn't make all that much of a difference. Actually, it's very logical. How big of a difference can it make? It's the vibrations, that it vibrates differently. On the lead pipe we have the first part of the lead pipe, then comes the hand guard, and then the hand itself. After that comes the water key, and then very quickly the tuning slide follows. There's not all that much that can vibrate which could influence the sound. Would like to ask the panel. It's not a secret that Russian horn players are behind in development when you compare them to European players. What do you think we are missing here? There are so many horn players all over the world. The Russian school of horn playing is known to us, but I must say that players like Boyanovsky, who I personally knew very well, he had such a beautiful tone and his father as well, that I would say that the Deutsche Horn School learned from them. He was such a fantastic musician. Barry Tuckwell said he was the best in the world, and I must say that I find he was absolutely right. He was the best of us all. Not all Russian players were so, but who is as good as Boyanovsky? Okay. <laughs> yes. What are we missing? That was the question. I think the lack of contact for the last few generations due to the Cold War. 
simply too little contact between East and West, and because of that, it was difficult for Russian horn players to keep up with the state of the art horn play. The West was simply able to develop faster. But today, there are naturally great players there who, in spite of difficult conditions, have become very, very good. But I must say, at this moment, more contact has occurred, and I find that to be very important. I want to help as much as I can along with my wife, Karina. For example, last year there were, I believe, five Russian horn players by the Mendelssohn Horn Days. My wife and I, along with Javier Bonnet, were in Rostov, and we saw a lot of good players, and we are at this moment working to translate my website into Russian. Yes, and I believe that those are all small gestures that should continue. And when the talent is there, they will then regain their position in yes, the world. Yes, I think uh, the same. I am agree with uh, Engelbert. It's, uh, the contact today is the most important thing. No? Uh, I have the, they should, uh, there is a lot of good players now in Russia, I am sure. Uh, I, I have seen in Rostov very, very good players. And they think they have to, to try to have more contact, go out, uh, uh, going to master courses uh, with teachers in, in Europe and then when they come back to Russia and the, the level and the, this will be up and up. Of course what uh, Herman said about Bujanovsky is really, it's really, uh, it's true. He was uh, so big, not horn player, not only horn player, so big musician, hmm. one of the best musicians I have ever um, heard in my life and uh, I think they have to, to continue in this way. You know? Uh, playing, not for, not for, uh, they have not to forget the the, Rus the Russian style, of course. It's it's something that we have not to to lose. forgot to lose to lose. Yeah. Because the, I think one of the things that I don't like in our life today is everything. It's now is the same. We have to play in only one way, and why? It's important to keep the French style, Spanish style, the Russian style, German style. Yes. This music is a horn player. It's yeah. the horn music is not. This is horn. No, it's these styles can should be different. survive. And yes, it's, it's a pity, really pity that the French style disappeared practically. Practically, it's really a pity. Yes, I hope it will come again from anywhere. Yeah. Yes, I, I I think that the modern horn players have to with the help of the historical instruments. Mm -hmm. We have to... to uh, these, these different styles have to survive. Yes. Uh, we can, now we are trying to use uh, French horns with, with uh, pistons. Well, uh, this does not but it's, it's so important. It's the play. Yes, but I also know. using sometimes right. using, mm -hmm. using original instruments mm -hmm. in, in when you use a different... Uh, it's, it's a new way. We'll see. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Herr Kirschankov to Herrn Schmidt. Question to Mr. Schmidt. Will the horn over time change yet again? I mean, for 100 years, people played mainly on a single F horn, and then came along double horns. After that, they have expanded to include a high F section. Is this the final version, or is it simply a short pause until the next big thing in horn development occurs? I must say, he described the development of the horn very well, from F horn to double horn, and now through to a high F horn, triple horn, but the triple horn, low F, B, high F, is already now just an in-between version. Already now, for 30 years, I offer a simple single simple double and triple horns with the ability to change key to a half tone higher and a half tone lower. But the most important is a half tone higher. And it is unbelievable that it is still not general knowledge. The world is still very traditional in its ways, still very slow in changing. 
Es wird sicher keine Quattro For sure, a quattro horn will not be the next step in development with four different keys in one horn. That doesn't make sense. The triple horn will not drive out all of the double horns that we use today. Double horns will continue to be built and there will be more discant double horns built with B high F or what I created B high E flat, which is for 95% of the literature out there the better combination. I don't know what will be in the next 100 years, but I'm pretty sure that within the next 30 years in comparison to the developments that I have already made, there will not be any major new changes. There will always be small mechanical changes along the way for sure, but for now, I have the problem that I am ahead of the times. First, it has to be better understood what I have created there. And yes, I do look around at what others create and see myself pretty much out there ahead of the pack. I am sorry, I know the question was a different one, but I do see myself ahead of the times. I would like to add, for me, the basic horn, the natural horn, which is not just the natural horn in F, but all of the different keys from top to bottom. The horn is a high horn and a very low horn, all very different instruments in all 12 keys. They have different lengths and different thinness. This knowledge has brought us, me, for 20 to 40 years ago, much further along with horn playing in the way we think. The natural horn is the reason why composers like Bach, Mozart, or Haydn, who wrote for natural horn, learned so much from the full register that the horn has to offer. And today, we have learned over the last 40 years how to again play the natural horn. That has brought us much further in our way of thinking about the horn. Yeah, that's right. It's very important. It's not to imply that the triple horn is the only instrument that everybody should play, not at all. Today we have a very diverse selection available from the natural horn to double horns to different types of triple horns, Vienna horn, that I want to establish even further, much further. Yes, horn in F, and it is also at the same time a horn in B flat that functions perfectly, which at this same time has a lot from the Vienna horn sound in it, with its specific small bell size and width. And so I would say this world is more interesting at this moment than it used to be. Anonymous question for Mr. Baumann. Which teacher is the best in Germany today? I can't really say. I'm still alive. I am who I am and everybody can learn from me, and I learn from everybody as well. There's no competition for this. We are a family, the horned family, and one cannot say good or bad. There are many very good horn players, and they all think the same. They are all my brothers. Could you at least mention a few names? Names from really good teachers in Deutschland. No, I cannot say. They are the best horn players that are there at this moment. In my opinion, uh, there is not the best, uh, because the best teacher because uh, some teachers are very good for orchestral things, or another teacher is very good for uh, solo or for. Uh, there is. Uh, technical things, one is a very good, one we have problems, but, uh, and there is so many good teachers, it's, it's not, a, it's not a competition, it's not, a, no. it's not like in sports, or the best, or, no. <laughs> for me, it was the best, of course. <laughs> Can you recommend how to find a good teacher to learn from?
How should one go about finding a teacher? One of the best, uh, most important things is the, the, how do you say, the communication the, between, the harmony between teacher and, and, and student. Sometimes one teacher is a very good teacher, but not for one uh, special student. Uh, you have to find also this chemi, chemi, chemistry. chemistry. No. I would suggest that one contact the well-known names, call and make an appointment with them. Everybody will be more than happy to give a test lesson. Yeah, this is important. If you have to choose one, you have to contact contact the, the teacher that you want and then try. In, in, uh, you, you can try from some lessons, two or three, or a summer course. And if you like the teacher and the teacher likes you, then yeah. it works. On the subject of finding a teacher, we have a very good solution each year here in my workshop, the Mindelzell Horn Days. This year, 2015, we will have from the 12th to the 15th of March three famous professors. First, Professor Bruno Schneider. He teaches in Freiburg and Geneva in Switzerland. And then, Phil Myers from the New York Philharmonic. He is not only in the USA, he also teaches in Switzerland in Fribourg. Who teaches in Trossingen here in Deutschland. So you can go ahead and sign up for the Mendelssohn Horn Days and you can experience live and test three horn professors here. Ilya Petrichenko to Herrn Bauman. For Mr. Bauman, where does one find inspiration? I live every day and live each day anew. I get up in the morning, brush my teeth, eat breakfast, and the rest of the day is an inspiration to me. I am completely awake. I do not sleep. Now, when I sleep, I sleep. But the rest of the time, for me, is an inspiration. Either through a very good student or in music. It is all an inspiration. And that throughout the day. It is really fantastic to meet people and to discuss different viewpoints and even to play music. That is wonderful and I call that inspiration. Inspiration comes from inside. That is something that one must have within oneself, this energy that one always wishes to discover something anew. For Mr. Schmidt, on a double horn, one can easily change the basic settings from B flat to F. How is it with a triple horn? Should one change the slides or can one also change it with the valve lever? I would like to expand quickly on the topic of double horns, why the basic position in F began and why it still remains so set in the minds of players. The first double horns were an F with a high B-flat horn on top, and one was used to playing a F horn, and one simply added a few notes in the high register with a high B-flat horn for technical passages. Then with that concept in mind, it was logical that the basic position was F, then with trigger B-flat. Over time, one discovered that the B-flat horn was good, or it became better, so that one could play most all of the notes better on the B-flat side. Then Deutschland managed to make B-flat the accepted basic position, which does make sense because if you're playing 70 to 80 percent of the time on the B-flat side anyway, then you don't have that continual pressure of holding down the thumb valve all the time. By triple horns, it is absolutely necessary to have the basic position on the B-flat side. 
When one plays on a triple horn with F as the basic position, then they don't have any kind of technique between the B-flat side and the high F or high E-flat side on the horn, because one must always press the B-flat horn down and then in addition press down the extended thumb key for the high F or E-flat side. That is really difficult. One simply doesn't have the advantage that a triple horn offers in that situation. So I would say there is only one correct basic position and that is B-flat. One cannot play on a double horn where one is used to F as a basic position and then switch to a triple horn or a high B-flat F horn where suddenly B-flat is the basic position and you constantly have to think different. No, the B-flat basic position is the only correct way. Triple horns I have had to deliver several with the basic position set in F simply because the players at the moment could not have played the horn any other way. But after a few months, nearly 100% of those players changed over to B-flat as the basic position. And that answers the original question. If one must change the slides or not? No, not at all. For that kind of situation, I developed a special stopper where one can simply take the screw and stick it into the other hole. Then one can lace the string just like one always does. Through changing that, one can simply change the mechanics from B flat to F to F to B flat, or the other way around. And Alexei Furukin to Allen. Has a question for everyone. Do you have plans to come to Moscow to do a master course sometime? We have been waiting so long for you to do so. We would be overjoyed and greet you with open arms. Unfortunately, at the moment, I have no invitation to come to Moscow. But I would love to come and talk about how the horn in today's world is played. I have the advantage of having a very good overview of the entire world. So I would love to come to Moscow. Oh, I was playing uh, months ago in uh, Rostov uh, with Sergei Polyanichko. 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 And uh, we have plans to, to do master classes and concerts in Moscow. And uh, why not perhaps uh, I was speaking with Sergei to invite Herman and do the Mozart there. I will try. Why not? Very similar to Javier. I also was in Rostov and I have plans to go to Moscow and of course to St. Petersburg again or anywhere in Russia. We are working at this. Vielen Dank. Thank you.